Taoist priest Xu Shuji arrives and demands the monk hand over Duan Diende. The monk claims that he does not know anyone by that name. He says he has invited a few of his friends who are prominent martial artists themselves to help mediate this issue. Chu Shuji accuses the monk of being deceitful and only requesting the extra days to give himself time to get fighters. The Taoist threatens that it doesn't matter who he brought, he will get Duan at Tian Day no matter what. As Chu Shuji attacks the monk, a blind man intervenes and stops the fight. He recognizes the old man and asks if he is the leader of the seven freaks of Jiangnan. K Zen. The old man confirms that he is correct. Chu Shuji says that he has long admired him as his group has a famous reputation for heroic deeds. One by one, the seven freaks of Jiangnan are introduced. K Zen, the flying bat, leader of the group, although blind he is skilled in the staff and dart throwing. Ju Kong, the marvelous handed scholar specializes in stealing and pickpocketing. Han Baoju, the horse deity, specializes in horse riding. Nan Siren, the southern hill woodcutter, specializes in the saber. Quan Jin Fa, the hidden hero in the busy city, specializes in the lance. Zhang Ash, the laughing Buddha, is Han Cheyong's lover. Han Cheyong, the Yue maiden sword, is the only female member of the group and Zhang Ash's lover. The Seven Freaks tells Chu Shuji that the monk, Reverend Jiaomu, is a man with a good reputation. They ask what conflict would he have with him in his temple. Chu Shuji tells them that there is no conflict as long as he hands over two people to him. Duane Tiende and Li Ping. He explains the situation to them and asks what they would do in his position. Ken Zen says he too would help them but he would first need proof that what the Taoist claims is true. Chu Shuji tells them he will procure his proof once he searches the temple. He returns of the temple and is followed by the seven freaks. Before he can begin searching the group stops him and a fight breaks out, Chu Shuji fights the group taking them all on. He holds an advantage and injures the group and Reverend Jiaomu is incidentally hurt. Ken Zan shoots a poison dart at Chu Shuji, incapacitating the Taoist priest but also gets injured himself. Duane Tiende hears the commotion and comes out. He sees that the Taoist priest is injured and cannot retaliate so he attempts to kill him. Reverend Jiaomu tells him to stop but Wayne Tian Day refuses. As he draws his sword Li Ping stops him by running into him revealing to everyone that she is the kidnapped widow. Reverend Jiaomu curses Wayne Tian Day telling him that he has ruined his reputation. He attempts to stop him from causing any further damage but is swiftly killed by him. Wayne Tian Day escapes from the temple taking Li Ping with him to go to the northern Jin territory into hiding. Chu Shuji and the seven freaks of Jiangnan discuss the situation at hand. They agree that both sides had misunderstandings and acted overly aggressive. The seven freaks tell the Taoist priest that as martial artists, their fight is not over yet as there is no clear winner. Chu Shuji proposes that the competition be decided without them directly fighting. He explains that Bao Zairu is still missing and he needs to find her. The seven freaks on the other hand will be responsible for finding Li Ping. Each side will be responsible for training each respective child. In 18 years. Each group will meet and the children will compete in martial arts. The winner of the competition will be decided by the match between the two children. Several months has passed and Li Ping has been sold into slavery. The group is raided by bandits leaving everyone dead except for Li Ping. Li Ping gives birth to a baby boy, Guo Jing. They are found by a passing party of Mongol nomads and are taken in by the group. Several years has passed and Guo Jing is now a young boy. An injured man. Jebe, asks Guo Jing to help him hide as he is being hunted by a group of men. A group and their leader, Demu Jin, arrives and interrogate Guo Jing to the man's whereabouts. Guo Jing refuses to answer their questions and is beaten. His mother tries to protect him and is also beaten. Upon seeing this Jebe gives himself up. He challenges the group to an archery contest and one of the followers accepts. Jebe wins the duel and Temu Jin spares his life but instead asks that the boy and mother's lives be spared. Temujin, impressed with this act of honor and loyalty offers Jebe to join his tribe. He states that no one will die on this day and also offers Guo Jin and Li Ping to join his tribe. Two princes from the Jin Empire, 6th Prince Wang Yin Hongli and 3rd Prince Wang Yin Hong Shi visit the Mongol camp. The 3rd Prince condescendingly throws money at the Mongols telling them to pick it up. Subscribe. Like. 
and share this video if you want this series to continue.